Asante Sana, Beatrice, we now have three candidates for the 5.30 p.m. who are already here. You just saw Dr. Kuro Okon. We also have Professor Michael Wanaina. And we have Dr. Jafet Kavenga Kalu. He's specific. He wants all his three names. So we're going to do that. We're still waiting for the 5.30 p.m. debate. Um, Joe Nyaga, Mohamed Abdul Badida, and Cyrus Jirongo. That debate will go on whether they're here or not. So that is a good sign to keep, to keep in mind. But it is, we were talking about the importance of the debates and institutionalizing this. Yeah. Whether or not you're Raila Odinga or you're Uhuru Kenyatta or you're a Kuro Court, you can afford to be, do a big rally, you're doing more door to door, this platform will always be there for every presidential season. Miguna? Yes, that's a very good thing. And I agree with my colleagues uh, about the value of institutionalizing uh, presidential debates. It should not just be presidential debates even gubernatorial debates, because in the U.S., for instance, it's the senators and the governors that eventually run for president and more often than not get elected. And that would be the incubation center for, for, for future leaders. Uh, the level of the debates, the issues that the debates distill, and the performance of the candidates would reflect how the country would be governed <laughs> and would actually determine whether the country makes a turn uh, for prosperity or a turn backwards. And so, for instance, today, when the presidential candidates would be auditioning themselves for the Kenyan people, Kenyans will be listening to hear who has the best plan for food security, for instance, who has the best plan for security, who has the best plan for employment, who has the best plan for infrastructure, and who has the best plan for building a nation, for cohesion? These are very important things because uh, in 1960, um, the, our forefathers who fought for independence said they would be fighting disease, ignorance, and poverty. Oh, mm -hmm. Now, after the second liberation, we can't keep on singing the same songs. The question would be, how have we done in fighting poverty? We've done very poorly. In fact, most Kenyans are poorer than they were in 1960. How about food security? We have all left agriculture, and there, there has been rural urban migration. Agriculture, which is devolved, the, the governors and the county governments have done nothing about. How about infrastructure? Right. They're dilapidated. So the point is that this is a, a real platform, which, if used properly, will actually determine how the country is governed to prosperity or to backwardness. When you show up on a platform like this, which has your competitors and you want to stand out, how do you make sure that you reach through to the Kenyans so that they feel, this is my guy, this is the person who understands my situation, my issues, and I should vote for? It's a question of uh, having the sound bite, but following through. One thing that I've realized when it comes to such debates, you have a candidate who's prepared with specific few liners. They don't go into the detail. So, like, this platform is the best place where you break it down into pieces. If you talk about, for example, food security, do you understand, for example, that it's a devolved function? Do you understand what role the national government can play vis-a-vis -vis the county government? Can you be able to draw a very coherent policy framework for both? And I think this is where we get the value, because most of the time, when you go to a political rally, uh, we have these contenders only giving their promises, but they don't say how. The how bit, the debate offers the platform. And I'm pretty excited that, you know, if you have the entire media, the entire audience focusing, every word, every sentence you say, we take it seriously. And importantly, I would love we... When you say we want to institutionalize, let's archive it. That a year down the line we'll follow through and ask you, you promise this, you promise on this platform, have you done it? So I would love when you talk about institutionalizing, it doesn't end at the pre-race. After the race, we'll follow. And in fact, if you look at the way the U.S. system works, Donald Trump's way of doing things for the last four months has been pegged on what he said, in what platforms, including the debate. So I think for us, it's a long-term thing. If we can pick up, and you know, for them to sell their agenda, they only need to break it down so nicely, show us how it is to be done. Because if you promise us, for example, that you're going to create 6.5 million jobs, if, for example, the opposition comes up and say, we seek to lessen the debt, how exactly are you going to do it? Okay. The questions will be there, the audience will ask, we want to see it, show us the way. Your expectation, Joki, for what needs to come up, because there's only one debate before the election, and 
Yesterday's opinion polls showed almost a dead heat between especially the two candidates. Mm. How do you stand out? I think um, I think we need to be honest. Uh, there's been a death of honesty um, in political speak in this country for a very long time. Um, a lot of people were talking um, last year in 2015, in 2014, come 2017, this is what is going to happen. 2017 is here and the same people who are talking are now quiet and kind of vanishing yes. into the woodwork. And, and like my colleague was saying, they're just coming with promises, ETC. I'm really interested in hearing what they have to say about youth especially because, um, and especially not, not necessarily to everybody who's above the age of 18. Mm -hmm. I think everybody who's 15 and over at this point in time really needs to be watched because if there's a by-election and people will forget you in the middle of your term, it's these people who are going to vote. So I think we need to talk to give these people a future. I think it's really interesting for us to talk about where we are as far as women mm -hmm. are concerned, um, as far as marginalized tribes. We need to have serious conversation about where the labor union movement is going in this country because we cannot have this recycled fights of CBAs that nobody is honoring, and especially when the person who's not or honoring day 51 is the government. The strike. Exactly, and it's tragic. It's absolutely no tragic. So how, how are Kenyans getting their TB medication? How are they getting their HIV medication? How are they getting their vaccines? It's ridiculous, and we expect them to be healthy and turn out to vote. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing what they have to say as far as the informal sector um, and enabling the informal sector to have a means to make a livelihood and a means to build wealth. Because we have, we've had too many people living on survival for too long. Professor Kiabi. Ladia, I want to mention two things. Yes. First of all, I, I don't even understand why people were complaining because I wish that in 2013 we had this opportunity. You know, we were eight, you know, on the platform and you hardly had time to explain even what you wanted to explain. Mm -hmm. So I think that the practice of splitting it, even the fact you had even five, like, like every, everybody getting like 5% and above, never mind you know, the question about the, the polls. Right. You still have to organize a debate in a way that people have sufficient time to explain themselves. But what I am looking forward to today in this debate it's not even just one specific program. What I'm looking for, because everybody will come and tell us, this is what I'm going to do for education, this is what I'm going to do for health. You know, Kenya is a country that is at a place where we all feel like we are ready to take off, but somewhat something is still holding us back. And I want each one of these presidential candidates to really elaborate in a sufficient depth somehow throughout the entire debate, the direction, paint for us a clear direction about what really Kenya needs to do okay. to leap forward. All right. We are... Uh, I, I'm, I'll come back to you. I'm like wondering... I'm, I'm not ignoring you. Why would I do something <laughs> like that? I'm not a monster. Okay. We're looking at Professor Michael Wenene right now. He's in his holding room looking through his papers, perhaps his briefing notes. You know, everybody comes here with, with talking points, and you want to make sure that you get through to them. You could be asked about climate change, but you want to say, my take on corruption is this. So <laughs> he's probably looking through all of those notes right now. And Lulu Hassan is in there. Lulu, what is... Um, you want to go and have a chat with him? Naam, shukran sana Larry Madoo kwa upande wa pili wa studio. Kama unavyoona tuko na Professor Michael Wenaina ambaye ni mgombea huru kidogo anaanza kujitayarisha tayarisha. Bwana Professor, watu wengi wanataka kujiuliza je umejitayarisha vipi kwa muda hali wa leo? Uh, kujitayarisha tumekuwa tukijitayarisha kwa muda mrefu sababu uh, kabla hatujaamua uh, kama kabla sijaamua ku, uh, kuingia katika kinyanganyiro cha urais nilikuwa nimeangalia mambo uh, ambayo yanahitajika kuangaliwa na hayo tulikuwa tunayaelewa kwa hivyo muda halo ni chance tu tumepewa uh, tuweze kujadiliana na wananchi na wananchi wacha waweze kutusikiza na waweze kujua uh, sera zetu ni zipi na waweze kujua watu ambao watawapigia kura tarehe nane wako na sera gani na watu wa aina gani. Mm -hmm. Watu wengi wanajiuliza, ulikuwa unafikiria nini ukasema kwamba kwa sasa nimetosha, natosha mboga kwamba nataka kuwa rais wa taifa hili? Um, mahali nchi iliyoko sasa ni mahali ambapo mtu yeyote ambaye anafikiria future ya nchi ama siku za usoni, especially uh, siku za usoni za vijana wetu. Uh, ni hali ya kusitikisha. Uh, na kwa hivyo mimi saile nimekuwa mhadhiri kwa miaka mingi na saile nimeangalia condition ya vijana na vile nimeangalia condition ya 
nchi nimeangalia condition ya uh, ya wanawake nimeangalia wa condition ya wafanyikazi nikaona kwamba haifai kwamba tunyamaze ati kazi yetu kila wakati ni kukomplain kwamba mambo hayaendi vizuri kwamba watu ambao wamepatiwa kazi hawafanyi kazi vizuri ni lazima watu wajitokeze na waseme kama kazi haiendelei vizuri kuna njia nyingine na njia ndio hii ili watu waamue Mm-hmm. Wajua kuna wakati mwingine mtazamaji ukiwa unataka kufanya jambo lazima ushauri familia na hapa kidogo namuona Mrs. Mwainaina ambaye tazungumza naye mawili matatu karibu sana. Uh, majina yako kama ilikuwa kwa majina naitwa Dorcas Mwainaina mm-hmm. na ni mimi bibi ya Professor Mwainaina. Dorcas Mwainaina, Professor alivyokuambia nataka kuwa kuuania kiti cha urais. Wewe ulimchukuliaje kama mwanamke? <laughs> Mwanza nilishtuka na nikacheka. <laughs> Alafu akanipatia nini manifesto. Mimi nikasoma yote. Ha? Nikasema eh hey, kweli dadi umeamua. Na kweli hapa naona kuna maoni mazuri. Lenye nilivutia kabisa ni lile la uh, Women and Youth Development Bank. I must say tangu wakati hiyo ndio nikasema kweli nchi yetu inahitaji mambo kama haya. Sako kuanzia wakati huo na ilikuwa na tarehe 28 na mwezi wa 4 mm-hmm. nikaamua kumpa support. Na mshukrani sana kidogo nitamuuliza mtoto, je una support baba? Ndio. Na he, una support kwa nini? Um yeah, ni, my father is uh, very peaceful. He is caring and he wants to invest for the youth of Kenya to make Kenya be- to give Kenya a better future. Wow. Hai, mmemsikia wenyewe mtazamaji kwa hivyo moja kwa moja na kurudisha kwake Duncan Kaemba ambaye kidogo nasikia na mawili na mawili matatu waweze kuzungumza na wageni siku hii. Asante uh, sana mwenzangu Lulu Hassan kwa mahojiano hayo kwa kweli profesa amejipanga kabisa na tunaona akibonyeza uh, bonyeza pale katika ile calculator pengine anajaribu kukadiria dakika atakazopewa atazitumia vipi hapa katika eneo tulilokuwa la wageni kuwasili kujiburudisha kabla ya kuingia ukumbini wengi wao tayari wameshapiga hatua hiyo na kuelekea katika ukumbi uh, manake katika dakika za kuhesabu basi ngoma ita kwa inaanza kutambarizwa hapa lakini kwa mengi zaidi wacha tuzungumze na baadhi ya wale ambao wako hapa Sheifa Okore mwenzangu wa Chenga ataweza kumuuliza mawili matatu kabla pia naye hajaweza kufunganya safari kuelekea ukumbini kwa ngoma itakayoanza katika dakika chache zijazo Achenga uwanja ni wako Asante sana Haemba well, we are still at the lounge and of course guests are still gearing up preparing taking a bit of refreshments uh, before they head into the auditorium where the presidential debate will be taking place let me now speak to Sheila Okore from Siasa Place to find out what are high expectations in this particular debate. Uh, welcome uh, Sheila. Um, are you excited to be here? I am. I am. I think for me it's more of a concern and I'm concerned about um, the key uh, leaders showing up because the last debate they disappointed Kenyans and the ones who have showed up I am really concerned about the fact that do they realize they disappointed Kenyans the last time and and the fact that there's so much expectation and the job they are they are vying for is so serious and to see them here today for me is first of all i need to know what they stand for and i need to know if they realize the last time by them not showing up it was such a disappointment to so many of us so i have such high expectations uh, in terms of you know the issues that they articulate what are you looking forward to uh, because we have a two tire debate the first debate starting at 5:30 the second one starting at 8 uh, pm so what are your expectations from the first debate First of all from the first debate I would love that all the candidates who are there apart from the one whose deputy showed up to apologize to the people of Kenya for wasting their time and resources and for showing them that they don't matter and then I would love to hear what they have in store for young people especially in regards to job opportunity affordable health care and employment specifically I want to know what they have in store for young women being majority voters and being majority participants in this election I would love to hear those things articulated very clearly tonight Well thank you Sheila of course a lot of expectations out here Sheila definitely wanted to hear what they will be putting in place in terms of governance for the youth governance uh, for the people of Kenya so we will be crossing over to Larry Madua who is on the other side and of course we will keep you posted of some of the guests who are here and what their expectations are over to you now Larry All right, many thanks, Catherine Duncan. <coughs> we were just looking at uh, Professor Michael Wanena's son who wants a better future for Kenya Daisy he Anastasia is born 
and a star is born. But, um, you know, that's those are the sentiments of all Kenyans. We all want a better <laughs> Kenya for Kenyans, you know. But um, it's a great thing, you know, getting an endorsement from your own son. You know, most of the time, people, most kids are always <laughs> complaining about their parents. So I think that's a good thing, you know. So maybe it might swing some of the undecided voters towards him. Who knows, you know. That's a good question, actually. Do you think this debate helped? change people's opinions because in the opinion polls out yesterday from Ipsos and from and I know Miguna's views on opinion polls but from Ipsos no, you don't know. <laughs> and from InfoTrack the undecided vote is between five and eight percent according to all of them these people will make a will not vote for undecided on August 8th they will vote for someone will this help them make up their minds I think so you know I, I think it's, it's important that we understand that something fundamental is happening here with this these debates because in Kenya we have never had issues based Campaigns. It's always been ethnic mobilization and rule of the mob. How many, uh, how big your rally can be. I mean, and you can see the rallies. The rallies, people are mobilized to attend the rallies. They are branded as a show of might. But there's no real issues that are debated. But on this platform, the candidates must debate issues. And what it does, it drives accountability, but it also shows us how they've interacted with their, their manifestos and what plan they have for the country, you know? And so I think that it will sway voters, those undecided voters, although, uh, uh, you know, by election time, usually people have decided, you know, the way they are voting. But I think that this will make the difference for those people who are not so certain, you know, about what does it mean, you know? So they, it will make a difference. But going back to uh, the question that you asked everybody, so I shall also answer my part on what my expectations are. What was the question again? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, but yes. one of the things that I really would like to hear from the candidates today is what plan do they have? Of course, the usual, my pet topic on inclusivity, particularly for women, because remember that we have an issue that is in abeyance, the two-thirds gender principle, which yes. is a constitutional principle, and will land this country in a constitutional crisis because parliament is going to be unconstitutional in its composition. How are they going to deal with that? The other thing is their commitment to inclusivity because we've just had a lot of, uh, you know, lip service around the inclusivity of women, youth, and very uh, cosmetic approaches towards the including them, really integrating them in development. The other thing is food security. I know everybody's mentioned food security, but last week we were interrogating a re report that was done by the Kenya Bureau of Statistics and right. the University of Nairobi African Women's Studies Center. Okay. And it shows, this is a 2014 report, and it shows that 18% of Kenyans are sleeping hungry every day. That's 7.1 million Kenyans. 18% of Kenyans 18 sleep hungry every day. Sleep hungry every day. Every day. This, is, this is, okay. I mean, it is... In the 21st century, it is unacceptable, yes. especially when you look at the amount of money that all has right. actually gone into food security, irrigation, you know, okay. all and right. on all those plans. So I think that I want to we cut really you in there. I want to cut you in there because I want to take you to the balloting right now. This okay. is an important part of who gets to sit where and get what question mm -hmm. at this debate. Nimrod Tabu is uh, leading us to that. Nimrod?